Hey, this is Dr. Brian Taggy with the ENT Minute. And today we're going to talk about mucus. What a wonderful subject. Mucus is a common problem, one of the most common problems that I see as an ear, nose, and throat physician. The manifestations of mucus are extremely troublesome and they can present in many different ways. The most common symptoms that people are describing to me with, if, with mucus or excessive mucus are the following. Things like post-nasal drip is one of the most common. Doctor, I have an excessive post-nasal drip. And we'll talk about that because that's actually erroneous in terms of, the, of, of where the drip is described to come from. We'll talk about that as we, as we go along. Phlegm is another term we use. Snot is another one. But what the patients are actually doing that can sometime, sometimes bother them or family members, things like throat clearing, excessively clearing the throat, coughing or snorting. Many individuals will come in and have this sort of habit to snort or even to have that tickle in their throat to cough the excessive mucus. You can either have a dry cough or a productive cough. A productive cough would be excessive mucus. Uh, choking. Some, sometimes people are talking about excessive nose blowing or nose blowing or excessive drainage from the nose. Some people will carry around tissue in their pockets and that becomes a part of them. So it's a lifestyle significant barrier to appropriate activity functioning in society. And so when I, when I characterize mucus, the first thing I want to know is whether or not the mucus has a discoloration. Is this clear mucus or is it discolored mucus? And that gives me an idea of which direction in terms of uh, quantifying and identifying where the mucus is coming from and what's happening. The consistency of the mucus, some mucus is described as being very thin and watery. Some mucus is being described as very thick. And again, that helps in identifying the potential source of the mucus. And so where does mucus, where can it come from? Two locations in general, two locations, either the nose or the throat. Nasal conditions that can produce excessive mucus and cause these symptoms are the following. The first one is allergy, and so this is relatively common, well-known. Allergic rhinitis, we call it. You can do testing for allergic rhinitis. It's, it's quite simple. You can either do a blood test or a skin test, and the, the consistency of allergy or allergic rhinitis is clear. It's usually associated with congestion, sometimes sneezing and itching, itchy, watery eyes, etc. Other forms or other causes include the common cold or upper respiratory tract infections. Uh, URI is a term that you'll hear. These are viruses that can cause the inflammation and then the inflammation induces the glands inside the nose to secrete excessive mucus. Uh, another inflammatory condition, sinusitis. Sinusitis can be bacterial, it can be viral, or it can even be fungal. And again, those organisms pr produce the inflammation that then induces the glands to secrete excessive mucus. Come on, almost like a defense mechanism to get rid of the organisms from the lining of the nose. A condition called non-allergic rhinitis or vasomotor rhinitis. These are individuals, and, and it's really common for people to complain of, I get excessive nasal drainage when I exercise or when I go out to eat, I'll have to blow my nose and it's, it's not a comfortable thing for me while I'm eating dinner and I have drippy nose or it can come from exposure to extreme environmental temperatures, either too hot or too cold. People going out in the cold and have drippy noses, this is characterized as vasomotor rhinitis. Uh, the other uh, location, it's interesting because 60% of people that come in to me and say, look, I've got this post-nasal drip, 
60% of those patients have mucus that's actually coming from the throat. It's not being produced by the mucus, by the nose, it's produced by the throat that then is being cleared from the throat. One of the most common is reflux. And reflux can come as, as symptomatic reflux with heartburn and indigestion, but even extremely common, maybe more common, are the individuals that never have heartburn. And this is called silent reflux. And their only manifestation may be that they have excessive mucus in their throat. Mouth breathers also have excessive mucus production. And how this happens is if you mouth breathe, you bypass your body's humidifier, which is your nose. And if you're bypassing that humidification, that humidifier, the air will get down into the throat and cause you to irritate the lining. Irritation causes inflammation. Inflammation induces the glands to secrete mucus. Very common. And so if you're a mouth breather because of nasal congestion, uh, that's a potential etiology. Again, allergic rhinitis is another one that we've talked about. That can produce inflammation in the throat that thereby produces the, the irritation and inflammation and excessive mucus production in the throat. Excessive toxins, dirty environments, construction sites, uh, pollution can cause actually the, can produce the irritant that then causes the inflammation. And then a condition called eosinophilic esophagitis. And that's a relatively rare condition, but we see it as another potential cause of, of the excessive mucus. And so these are the conditions that we work through. And sometimes this requires a physical examination. Uh, a detailed history, and sometimes endoscopy that we perform in the office. And oftentimes I'll send patients on to get scans, CT scans in particular of the sinuses, and even an allergy test to determine the etiology of the excessive mucus. And so this is something that you'll work out with your ENT physician. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please note those below. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you at the next session. Thanks for joining us.